Imagine a simple dataset with two classes, blue and red. To classify new data based on the samples we already have, we need a boundary that separates these classes. In simple cases, this boundary is a line called a hyperplane in higher dimensions. We can also define a region parallel to that hyperplane that represents the space between the nearest points from each class. This is called the margin. What the support vector machine, the SVM, does is to find the largest possible margin between classes, positioning the hyperplane exactly in the middle. This optimal hyperplane divides our feature space clearly into two classes. Our first example is easy, as the classes are linearly separable. However, real-world data is usually more complex. Often, datasets cannot be separated by a straight line. These are non-linearly separable. The XOR dataset is a common example. How can we handle this using SVM? Before we answer this, let's simplify the problem first. In a simple one-dimensional scenario, classification is straightforward. A single threshold separates two classes. All points on the one side of the threshold belong to the blue class and all points on the other side belong to the red class. Rearranging points leads us back to nonlinear separation. Now, we cannot use just one threshold. However, adding a new feature, such as the square of the original feature, can help. For instance, a point originally at 8 gains a second feature value of 64, which is 8 squared. Visualizing this updated dataset, we now see that the originally non-linearly separable data becomes linearly separable in a higher dimensional space. Due to our chosen function, squaring, the transformed space resembles a curved line. By adding more points to simulate all possible positions in this new space and mapping them back to our original one feature space, we see clearly how the nonlinear classification problem has been solved by increasing dimensionality. So, originally we had one feature per point, but we added a second feature turning a nonlinear classification task into a linear one solvable by a two dimensional SVM. So, is this the kernel trick already? This process of adding new features to our data is very powerful but it's still not the kernel trick. It's just adding new features to our data. To truly understand the kernel trick, we must explore how SVM maximizes margins. To find the widest possible margin, the SVM algorithm maximizes a dual function. This function includes the Lagrange multipliers, the values we optimize to determine the position of the optimal hyperplane, along with data labels, which are numerical, such as plus one for red and minus one for blue, and the data samples themselves. The multiplication of data sample pairs in SVM is called the dot product, which involves multiplying corresponding features and summing these products. With many features, this computation can become intensive, especially compared to the multiplication of Lagrange multipliers and data labels, which are just simple scalar values being multiplied. The double sigma notation over indices i and j means we compute the dot product for all possible pairs of data samples, leading to a large number of operations as the number of features and samples increases. With one feature, the dot product requires only one computation. With two features, it requires two multiplications and one addition, so three computations in total. Let's get back to our original non-linearly separable dataset and suppose we expand from two original features to six specially chosen features for the XOR problem. These features involve squaring and multiplying by the root of 2. In two dimensions, as we already know, for dot product we have three computations. And what about the complexity in six dimensions? 
step-by-step -step calculations reveal that we now need 24 computations, significantly more. However, it turns out that we can simplify this complex six-dimensional dot product to a simpler form of an original two-dimensional dot product plus one all squared. Remarkably, this simpler calculation yields exactly the same result as the complex six-dimensional calculation. And why is that important? The simplified computation involves only five steps, nearly five times fewer than the original 24 steps. I selected this specific set of features to allow the transformation of a six-dimensional dot product into a combination of operations based on a two-dimensional dot product. This dramatically reduces computation time. But this simplification isn't possible for just any set of features. It only works when the chosen features can be aggregated and expressed as a function of lower dimensional dot product. Just like in our case. So, instead of explicitly mapping the data to a higher dimension and computing dot product directly, we use a kernel trick to compute it using dot product in original feature space. This way, we get all the benefits of complex feature space without the computational cost. It's all about computational efficiency and mathematical elegance. And this is kernel trick. And just to remind once again where we use this kernel trick. To find the widest possible margin, the SVM algorithm maximizes a dual function. Originally, the dual function in the SVM formulation involved expensive computations in higher dimensional space. The kernel trick replaces this by calculating a kernel function directly in the original lower dimensional space, significantly reducing computational time. And as I mentioned, not every function can serve as a kernel. But common kernels include polynomial kernels with adjustable degrees and we used a second degree polynomial for XOR problem a moment ago, and radial basis function, RBF, controlled by the gamma parameter. Let's apply these kernels practically to our XOR dataset. As we know, a classic linear SVM cannot separate the two classes in this case. However, a second degree polynomial kernel performs exceptionally well correctly classifying all the points in dataset. A higher degree polynomial kernels also succeed at this task and in our case the decision boundary doesn't change significantly. So let's examine the RBF kernel now. Our first try with low gamma value works really great here. It gives perfect classification on the XOR dataset, clearly distinguishing classes. And what happens when we keep increasing gamma value? The decision boundary now fits the training data excessively well. And we see overfitting, where the model captures too much detail from the training data, limiting its ability to generalize. This topic, along with underfitting, deserve a separate video. In conclusion, now we know that working on higher feature space can help us to transform non-linearly separable datasets to linearly separable in higher dimensions. But the key point of kernel trick is how to efficiently address non-linear separability by leveraging high dimensional spaces without explicitly performing costly computations. This elegant method greatly enhances the capability of SVMs, making them powerful tools in machine learning. Thank you for watching.